Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Vector. It's 2024 video and today we're going to carry on looking at some of these amazing new features in the latest version. Now don't forget that 2024 just came out a couple of weeks ago and you'll notice that we do have a fantastic offer, Sweet Deal 24, where you can save 40% on Vectorworks Design Suite. So if you are new to Vectorworks or wanting to try Design Suite, now is a very good time. So take a look at that. Okay, so if you've seen my first video, you will have touched on some of the amazing new features and started to have a look at the new interface. Now I've got more to say on this. I've dug a bit deeper into the interface and I will be making another video specifically on this soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. Um, we also had a really good look at the new rendering modes with the amazing things like uh, depth of field and sort of bloom and other rendering effects in shaded mode. But I only really, really touched on the uh, faster render sections. And the other feature that I want to touch on today is the viewport styles as well. So let's get into this and let's start off with the rendered sections. And this is actually the first time I've done this. I'm super excited to uh, explain this as we go. And basically, this is a really nice little project. And if I kind of just uh, zoom around the model, you'll see, you know, it's a sort of relatively decent level of complexity in the site here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my plan view and I'm going to basically cut a site section. I think the very first thing I want to do is just put it into uh, not perspective mode. So I'm just going to go to orthogonal mode. Okay, and I'm going to basically click on my clip cube. So one of the things you will notice about the new interface, of course, is the new icons. Um, a really good little tip is if you just take your time and just sort of spend a few minutes hovering over these, you'll be able to kind of see pretty clearly what the icons are. And okay, clip cube did change a little bit. That used to be a teapot icon. So click onto the clip cube. And basically that has already started to section my model. So I'm gonna kind of take this through and just sort of section it right through the middle here, all through the site. Okay, so in order to generate the section, I simply right click, create section viewport. We're gonna go and create a brand new sheet layer for this. Okay, so let's call this uh, section 21. Let's call this section VP. And basically what we'll do is edit the properties of that creation to be like 300 DPI. So a really nice high quality render. Now I'm going to go for it um, to begin with as a hidden line rendering and just see what happens. And we'll click OK. So that will start processing down here and you can get a feel for how long this will take in hidden line mode. Okay, so here we are on the sheet layer. The viewport is now generated and you will notice that with 2024, you get a really nice sort of preview. Uh, this isn't actually the final render yet. So let's click update and see how long that takes to process. And it looks pretty zippy. So you can see it processing the geometry here. And then when the bar is completed, the section will be done. Now, bearing in mind, there is a lot of complexity here. That was pretty fast. There's lots of trees and plants and stuff as well. So let's have a quick look at the hidden line. Let's update this one too. So we'll click update and just watch the uh, cutting section progress bar down here at the bottom. And you can see it's kind of basically generating the viewport preview. And here we go, we've got the teapot. Now, one of the really nice things about sections is you can actually carry on working. So I could sort of switch around to a different drawing if I wanted, go and have a look at the rest of the project. And here in this particular project are some other sections that I've done as well. The teapot is still wearing away in the background, so that implies that that one's done. Um, and if I go back, you can see that one is now finished. Good, so, so far, this uh, speed test looks pretty impressive. So all of this is really, really good. You know, these would have taken a lot longer on Vector. It's 2023. It just means that you can kind of work a lot more fluidly with your design software and basically look bingo, we're updated already. Now, a really nice little tip, once you kind of um, have updated and you don't want to see the red warning line anymore, for any viewports that aren't updated, just click the uh, display viewport out of borders toggle to turn those off. Okay, fantastic. So very, very impressed. Now, I just really want to really cap it off with cutting a section live in front of you one more time. So I'm going to go to my clip cube. And basically what I think I'll do this time is actually cut a looking down perspective. So let's go down a bit further and just see if I can get into that floor. There we go. Right click and create section viewport. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new sheet layer. Let's just click okay and see how long that original section takes. Bang, there we go. 
Now, if I want to, I can actually go through and you'll see that this is actually a plan section. So this enables me to basically render also using shaded mode. Let's go for it. And I should get some nice shadows coming in on this particular viewport. Um, well, it depends actually whether I've actually got those enabled. So let's just go and enable them. They are enabled, uh, but I think what it is, if I go to layers, yes, that's it. I've turned my heliodons off. We'll just turn those on for you. And I'll go into my classes. Let's type in Heliodon in my filter. Okay, we've got a Heliodon in there. So basically, it's no shadows for showing because I didn't actually have that Heliodon's layer turned on. So the next thing that I'm going to do is just click on to Edit Sheet Layer and I'm going to increase the DPI. I also want to do one other thing though. I'd like to swing the Heliodon around just so we've got a bit more light coming into the design with a front Heliodon. Let's try that. So we'll click Update one more time. Um, it looks like we'll get some light coming into the building now from the other side and we'll get a much nicer quality rendering. You can see pretty decent. Okay, so very, very impressive. Um, let's do one more quick update on the section here. So I'm basically going to just drag this up. going to click over and to the bottom and go to my favourite button, one of these on sections, click reverse direction. And basically you would see that if the warning lines were on, this section needs updating. So let's take them both and let's just click update. But before we do that, we'll do one more thing. Let's put these in shaded mode and just check we've got our shadows on. So we'll do all these things that we were just doing previously. Turn those heliodons on and let's get at least one heliodon turned on. Uh, we'll go for the front one, I think. See how that looks. Good. OK, so let's go for it. Let's click update and see how long these take. So. I think you'll agree with me, uh, Vector 2024 seems really, really snappy. And, you know, these new sections, particularly, let's just update the layer here. So 72 DPI, never very nice. Let's click 300. One more time. You can see perspective sections with a bit of rendering, a bit of light, a bit of shadow. And literally, they just render up in no time at all on my Mac M1 Pro. So very, very impressive. And I really love these kind of drawings. I think they're really informative. You can certainly spot all the bits that you haven't finished yet as well. But yeah, clients really like these and they're really, really just explanatory drawings. So what a fantastic new feature, the uh, faster sections in our viewports. Um, I'm not sure whether it's uh, 18 times faster. Haven't yet tested that, but definitely it seems to be using a lot less memory and very, very rapid. So fantastic. <laughs> Okay, so the next feature I really want to talk about is the big one for me. It's called Viewport Styles. And this is something that I imagined a few years ago with Vectorix. I did suggest this on the beta list. Um, so hopefully, maybe it was my idea, a little seed of it there at least. But no, I'm only kidding. It's a wonderful idea. Basically, this will really speed up your workflow and enable you to basically create styles that you can share with your colleagues and basically work very rapidly between different projects. Okay, so let's have a little look how this would actually work in reality. I'm going to go through to my project. Okay, so here is a really nice little viewport style that I particularly like. And you'll notice if I do want to, I can basically go up and you can see at the moment it says unstyled. Okay, now this is brand new for viewports. So if I would like to, I can create a new viewport style. Basically, I can give this a name. Let's call this uh, section BP. And basically, you'll notice that everything in here at the moment is going to be by style, including even things like a standard drawing label. OK, I'm just going to go for the defaults at this stage at the moment. Um, and I'll come back and look at how style works with these viewports in a second. But even things like the scale is by style. So when I click OK, that is now saved and you'll see if I want to, I could actually go to a completely different drawing. So let's go to another sheet. Let's take this one. And basically, I can apply my style by clicking Replace. Or if I prefer, I can go to my Resource Manager and just have a little peek in here. And I'm just going to kind of use my filter. Let me just pin this, as I like to do. And let's just pin this to Viewport Styles so it makes it easy for me to see the style. OK, so watch this. I can basically drag and drop my style onto that viewport. And you can see it's already applied the scale. OK, I've got to at least uh, move the drawing label, but this is quite frequently the case. Move that to a different spot. 
So that's really, really cool. But what if I want to have this back at the scale it was? Well, you'll see that all of the aspects of uh, the viewport are grayed out essentially. And you can really, really see that if I go to hide style parameters here. Now, everything is by style. So I really don't have a lot of control apart from things like the sort of properties of the extents and so on. Now, if I go to edit style, you'll notice that I can simply click on the little button here instead of by style and unlock some of these settings. Okay, so let's go for this. Let's unlock those two. Let's unlock perspective type as well. And I think that'll do for now. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with just that. So I'll click OK. Now you'll notice that if I uh, hide style parameters, at least I can change the scale. Let's go 1 to 50. And if I do want to, I've now got the different levels of detail. Let's go for high. Let's just click update and see the effect. Okay, so really, really fantastic. Let's go and repeat this process on something else. So I'm going to go to this elevation here. And I'm pretty happy with this rendering style. So I'm going to go and create a brand new viewport style. Let's just call this uh, elevations. Okay, this time I'm just going to call this elevations. Okay, so this time I'm just going to unlock the scale. What else should we unlock? Um, I think we'll also unlock the projection and projection type. Ah, that's what I missed before. I see now. Okay, I might also unlock the lighting options and that's it. That's pretty much it. Click OK. So let's go through the process now of creating a new elevation. Um, okay, what I'm going to do is just actually apply it to this one here. You can see ever so slightly different style. Basically, I'm going to change to a completely different view. Okay, and then I'm going to apply the style. So I'll go to new viewport style. I can click replace. It now gives me the option to select my styles from my resource manager, which is really, really neat. Click OK. And basically, let's click update. OK, I see what happened here. It's also saved the view there. So one more little trick here. Let's click edit style. Um, we'll go through and somewhere in here will be the view that's been saved. There we go. So let's change that one to back. And let's actually just edit this one to. Yeah, that's fine. So now we've changed it, we can change that to the front view and click update. And you can see very, very rapidly, we've got that same style, but just with um, those different aspects. So honestly, viewport styles is gonna be such an amazing thing. Let's go into our viewport style. We can easily uh, duplicate those styles as well. And what's really cool is we can click edit and come back and edit these at any time. So, for example, um, let's just do this. Let's just say I'm in a new project, completely new project, and I want to apply the viewport style that I've developed from my other project. So I can go to Style Replace. I'm just going to go ahead and edit the style because one of the things I will want to do is make sure that I can turn on my layers and classes in this particular viewport. So if you do edit the style to allow layers and classes to be turned on, then you get that flexibility across different files uh, depending on the class names and things that you've actually used. So let's go ahead and click update and see if that new imported viewport style from the other file will work here with a few minor changes to the layer and the class visibilities as well. Good, so you can see that new section has worked really, really, really nicely. Uh, the settings from the other file have come in. Yeah, the lighting is a bit brighter, the shadows are a little bit different, and we've got those really nice visibilities, but we've still got the complete control over the layers and classes, and that's because we've basically unlocked the things that we want to display in here. But everything else can stay locked up until we need to modify it. So I really am excited about viewport styles. It's one of the big features I've wanted for years, and it's here. I will be definitely doing more on this, so make sure you subscribe for my next videos on these wonderful two features. So finally, I really just want to say thank you so much for watching the video. And if you are new to Vectorworks, uh, do let me know if I can help with any Vectorworks training for you. Something that I've been doing for 20 years and it's my real passion of mine. I love teaching and training. And we do all of this via Zoom. Uh, it's all recorded for you. And basically it's very sort of personal and we get to know each other really well. So I will look forward to seeing you in the next video and I'll look forward to hearing from you if I can help with any Vectorworks licenses or any training whether all over the UK or all over the world. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.